Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Edgar, and here's what he has to say. Hello Sandman, this is Edgar. I requested a video at the end of last year to hear your perspective on a specific topic, and I basically want to hear one again today. I would like to hear your opinion on some articles that appeared on Discovery News, Live Science, and other science news sites about how air conditioning systems are biased against women. I would like for you to talk about the implications of using titles such as Office Air Conditioning Biased Against Women. Instead of the more impartial and less feminist-laden, turn the AC up, women have lower resting body temperatures. One would expect these gynocentric clickbait titles from mainstream media outlets, but perhaps not from sites that disseminate empirical findings, as these are supposed to be much more impersonal and impartial. If this does not provide enough material for one video, could you perhaps use the second half of this video to give a kind update to your Women React to MGTOW video? Many thanks and enjoy. Well, Edgar, thanks for your donation. And there's more than enough material in your question for a complete video about the evils of so-called sexist air conditioning. I've even read that it's actually a big plot against women by men in general. That this is all some sort of patriarchal conspiracy. Scientifically speaking, women's metabolic rates are 20-30% to 30 lower than men's, so they do generate less body heat than us. Yet somehow we're still to believe, based on feminism, that the biological differences between men and women are just social constructs. Ironically, when women are cold and unhappy or unsafe, they're allowed to bring up biological differences between the sexes. But on the other hand, when women want a job or position that a man has, she has to bring up the perception of her own physical prowess and abilities equal to his in order to convince herself, the man as well as society in general, that she's equal. It's all about elevating the women and giving them an unfair advantage over men when needed. And it's also about handicapping men when men have some sort of advantage over women instead. The majority of the productive people in our society these days are men. And we tend to do the majority of the grunt work producing the financial value in office environments. So it's only fair that these environments be suited better towards us. Women can also put on more layers of clothing in such places, whereas men can't. Men for the most part are not allowed to not wear a jacket at work. And I remember years ago when I was briefly in a corporate veal fattening pen, I was constantly scorned for going around in a dress shirt and tie, and was often told to put on my jacket. Ironically, air conditioning was created for 40-year-old men that weigh on average 154 pounds. And that's a standard that was probably set in the 1940s and 1950s, when there were very few women found in office environments. And it's known as the thermal comfort model. Women can deal with the evils of so-called sexist air conditioning by basically putting on more layers of clothing. They can actually layer up instead of expecting the built world around them to become more comfortable to suit their needs. Ironically, this doesn't happen in private homes where men are often the ones that usually turn up the thermostat to save money on home cooling bills during the summer months. My mother is always on my father's case saying that she's often too cold. And women are biologically different because they require higher indoor temperatures in the summer and higher indoor temperatures in the winter as well. And many women's arguments are now that lower air conditioning temperatures are a complete waste of energy. According to one reporter, she has a solution for men. Men should actually start a fashion revolution. She says that men insist on dressing against the environment, and that as a society we burn too much CO2 to keep men comfortable in suits. And this is actually coming from a Washington Post reporter who wants men to start wearing linen suits. Because ironing and dry cleaning don't waste any energy either, right? But if we follow that same course of reasoning, then women technically should have higher or more tuned up temperatures in the winter to stay warmer than men. But you don't hear anyone complaining that we have to produce more CO2 gas to heat women in the winter. Let's face it, women are energy hogs in the winter, and men are energy hogs in the summer, and that's just the way that it is. Men have to because their employers demand that they wear suits. And my solution to all this craziness is to basically create work environments that are not co-ed, but are actually segregated. We should basically get men and women to compete against each other in separate work environments once again. After all, if feminists are right and we're truly equal biologically, then those differences will not show up in segregated work environments, right? And I guess that segregated work environments would finally put to rest who's actually more productive and less wasteful. But we can't segregate because we all know that that would be a disadvantage to women. What I find really insulting is that these scientific articles, and gynocentrism in general, demand that women get greater comfort, even if it actually means greater uncomfort for men. And now that women see air conditioning as a threat to their happiness and well-being, what's next? Are they going to complain about female jackets not being thicker than male jackets to keep them warm? I think someone needs to remind women about the history of air conditioning. We should all let them know that it was actually a man that invented air conditioning in Buffalo, New York back in 1902. But I guess that women don't usually care about the past unless somehow it has to do with the oppressive patriarchy. 
and also that most of the natural gas that women use to heat themselves in the winter is produced by men in the gas fields. Over the last decade, a decline in conventional gas production has been made up for by shale gas in North America, and most of that production is actually funded by junk bonds, and shale companies are now mostly non-profitable. The reason I'm saying this is in the future, home heating and cooling costs will become more expensive. So all this debating about sexist air conditioning is ridiculous, as we might actually start approaching energy scarcity in a completely different light. I'm predicting that this winter we'll start to see articles and pieces attacking corporations for not raising the temperature enough because it's too cold for women. If companies start changing their tune towards warmer temperatures in offices in both the winter as well as the summer months, while pursuing policies to please their female workers, then they could actually start to see the productivity of men drop as a result. And if you've ever traveled to a warm part of the southern United States, or any other warm country, you'll often notice that people work a lot less when the higher temperatures are there, because they slow a man's mind down because he has to spend more energy cooling himself than actually doing work. So turning up the thermostats will actually make the economy function worse, and men will be less productive, and might even lead to a noticeable decline in stock prices across the board. And all of this because women don't want to wear blouses or sweaters when they go to work. Women want to be exposed at work so they can flaunt their bodies and get male attention. That's what this is all about. And if you notice the female mouthpieces that are coming out and attacking misogynistic air conditioning, both on the scientific as well as conventional media, they tend to be overweight. But if you're fat, doesn't that extra layer of tissue insulate you from the cold? I always thought that it did. The way I see it, this issue is all about overweight and unattractive women wanting to get more male attention at work. The good-looking girls are going to get the attention regardless of what they do or what they wear. But the bad-looking women in every portion of our society are getting more and more upset because men aren't paying them any attention. They're getting more and more desperate for attention, so they're doing more and more ridiculous things to get men to look at them. Someone needs to tell them that more men are going their own way, and that's probably the real reason that men aren't paying them any attention. And not because they're bundled up in sweaters and cold offices. Edgar, the real reason these scientific journals, as well as newspapers and television stations, don't simply use headlines like, Turn the AC up, women have lower resting body temperatures, is because headlines like that aren't attracting enough viewer attention, and they aren't selling advertising space. Scientific magazines and newspapers are also beholden to the laws of advertising dollars. And because of that, you're going to see more and more ridiculous sensationalized titles as the lamestream media goes out of business because it can't attract enough eyeballs to lame stories that no one actually wants to listen to. Also, there are a lot less scientifically-minded people in our society, so the scientific journals actually have to compete with the mainstream media. Regardless, the way I see it, women are going to try and make life uncomfortable and unbearable for men who have to sweat in their suits in most offices, and the dress code is such that you can't take off your jacket. Maybe men will start doing what public transit workers in Sweden are doing. Bus and streetcar drivers aren't allowed to wear shorts, but a provision in the dress code allows anyone, male or female, to wear a skirt. So Swedish transit workers are doing just that. They wear skirts when the weather gets hot. And ironically, women find men in skirts even less attractive than shorts. So the bottom line is this. Fat women freezing their butts off in office environments try and upset men and make us get confrontational to initiate mating rituals of a sort. And in the end, men might just put on skirts and give women even less attention. And I'm even putting a link to that story about the Swedish tram and bus drivers in the description below so you can see the future of the office environments in North America. I can just see it now. Men with hairy legs like Liberace shedding their hair everywhere. And what will women do then? Complain that men shouldn't be allowed to wear skirts because we leave our hair on the seats and they actually have to sit there later. For me, the solutions are quite clear. Segregate male and female work environments, or just tell women to bundle up and protect their modesty. It will go a long way to protect their moral character, and they might actually get some respect from the men that they want eyeing them in the first place. But like I said, I don't think this is the last we're actually going to hear of this type of news story, scientific or otherwise. I strongly believe that women are going to complain that office environments are too cold in the winter as well. So I just want to prepare everyone for a flood of such stories later this fall and winter. What does everyone else out there think? Will this story blow over as the summer ends, or do you think it's going to basically show its ugly head yet again? Please put your comments down below and share your opinion. In the past, women and men both wore more clothing when it was colder in the winter, and also when it was warmer in the summer with no air conditioning. And I think that people have become so narcissistic that we can't even handle even the slightest bit of discomfort in our personal lives. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today's video. I'm also going to add a link in the description below to the latest Cool Buildings video. This latest one is about a fallout shelter made out of 42 school buses. And I wander underground with the guy who built it with nothing more than my camera and flashlight. And I think this place would be awesome for a horror film as well. Or possibly even an underground hotel. Or at the very least, Bruce Beach, the creator, could basically do paid tours. 
so take a look at the video, it's in the description. And if you like these types of videos, please subscribe to Cool Buildings. Thanks again, Edgar, for your donation as well as topic suggestion. And as for everyone else, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the divorce lawyers away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.